So we have the 3D printed part generated in CAD, OpenSCAD, and then the cast silver part, sterling silver part, with a lab-grown sapphire cast in place, and a lab-grown ruby cast in place. Get that in focus. Lab-grown ruby cast in place. Lab-grown sapphire. And to top it all off, we have to do the prong setting demonstration for this big stone here. Before we do all of that, though, the sprue needs to be cut off. And the goal here is to preserve this black oxide finish. It's very durable and very hard to repeat without torturing everything. So we're going to be deliberate in polishing these areas before we set our final step. Okay, so everything's been filed down on the surfaces, and there's still a little bit of texture on the interior. So we're going to use the flap sanding fitting on the Fordham to clean out that interior. And you just want to make sure your sandpaper is going the right way when you start, and it doesn't slide off the tip when you apply pressure. And then just roll it around the interior. And the trick is you need to file everything to a uniform circle first, and then your finishing is just going to take those last little details and clean them up. But you need the same uniform surface coverage. So if you end up working one area too much, you're going to end up with a groove in the metal. So we want to be careful that we're using the same speed of rotation throughout the part so we get a nice uniform sheen. Now we're going to do that via time lapse. Okay, so now we're ready to set our stone. Everything's polished up the way we want. The ring fits on a finger the way we want. You want to check all that. Before you do the final stone setting, this is a 13 millimeter CZ, okay? And there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, one is to bend the prongs out and then bend them back in, and the other is to knock these prong components downward. Um, what happened was, somewhere in here, two of the prongs were labeled with Sharpie that they stuck out further, and uh, the Sharpie has since worn off. But I know for a fact it is this prong and this prong that have not been moved. So these two prongs are the ones that need to be squeezed in. We're going to set our stone in place so it seats within those little grooves. And then with the nylon jaw pliers, just gently squeeze our prongs. Holding the gemstone up, elevated so that it seats. On one side, and then again on the other side. So we're doing that until the stone stays perfectly captured. There we go. 
That's a good angle. So you just want to check and make sure the stone's not moving. If it's moving, you need to reposition. This takes a lot of strength for the larger ones. So traditionally, the other method to squeeze these down is to just take a burnisher or a rocker just sort of push down and roll this edge over and both work it just depends on how you designed your stone setting okay but you're gonna repeat this process until the stone does not wiggle okay so the last thing you need to do First, we are doing compression with the nylon pliers to make sure that the prongs close. And then to make sure the stone doesn't wiggle and is firmly seated, you switch to, this is a pair of, oh come on, there we go, uh, brass jaw pliers. And that allows you to get the final compression of the prong and you can choose a couple of different angles. So general compression, that'll squeeze tight. And then if you want to knock the top of the prong down, that's going to help seat the um, edge of your stone firmly. So basically around all four sides, here and here, and then rotate your ring, and then again the same position where we're putting most of the pressure on the top of the prong here in order to seat the stone in place. So the stone won't move. You can see that if I tap it or I try to rotate it, it won't wiggle. And so there it is. The diva ring.